Hi there, this is Jennifer Marshall with Red Carpet Report, and we are in Beverly Hills at the world premiere of Not a War Story. Follow Ross, you know. My gosh, hello, what brings you here tonight? Uh, I'm the producer of Range 15, Hollywood Herd. I directed the second unit as well, and uh, you know, this is a movie that shows how it all came together and how it all happened, which was, you know, a labor of love from all the veterans that donated to the movie and first responders that donated over a million dollars to make a movie happen. and and everybody came together and we shot it in 14, 15 days and you know it was number one on uh, Amazon and in the top five on iTunes, something that's never been done in the history of an independent film and Hollywood was silent about it. The, the movie industry, no one recognized it, no one acknowledged it, you know, and it just shows that when you're outside of the movie system, they don't want to know that anyone can be successful. You know, we, appear, we appeared in 450 theaters and had over a $1,400 gross in every theater where the movie was shown. But you know, no one wants to admit that you can go out and do a movie on your own and make it successful. And the best part about this movie that we're going to see tonight, the documentary, is we're going to see that what it took to make this movie and the veterans that got behind the film and, and made it happen and the veterans that, you know, guys with no legs, guys with no arms, Mary Dog, who was, you know, in the uh, scene of the movie where, you know, she tries to pick up keys for three minutes, which is super uncomfortable for everybody. But those of us that were doing it because she just wanted to be treated like a regular person. And you know, that was the first time she felt like she was able to enjoy and laugh at, at what life had dealt her and, and everyone accepted her for who she was. So, you know, it was an amazing moment. Well, Mary is, is an amazing person, a wonderful person. And I feel like even though Hollywood may have been silent, veterans loved that movie and it literally went viral within the veteran community. Well, absolutely. I mean, the trailer got three, three million views of the trailer within 48, 72 hours, you know. so. The veteran community, they finally got a movie that was done by veterans that didn't say, hey, all of us veterans are damaged, all of us veterans, you know, can't function in the real world. It was a chance for us to say, hey, you know, we are capable of functioning. We, we are what holds, you know, the, the U.S. together. Whether we're active duty or whether we're reserve, you know, we're still able to do whatever we have to do. Now, did you have a connection to the veteran community before Range 15? Yeah, I flew for the Air Force uh, from 1982 to 1994. You're a veteran, too. Yes, I am. So am I. Don't let the hair fool you. This is I know. The well, it's ever been in my life. Don't let the gender fool you, because exactly. people sometimes. No, no, the right. That, uh, so, what was it like making a movie with veterans as opposed to making a movie with a Hollywood crew? Um, I've been in the film business for about 18 years now, and there was never the attitude that we couldn't do it. There was never the attitude of oh, it's going to be a 16-hour day. There was never an attitude that that you know it couldn't be done. These guys came to the movie prepared. We did five pages of dialogue with five characters in the scene, and everybody knew their lines, the other guy's lines, the, the, the guy in the next scene's lines. So, you know, we, we shoot a master shot, we shoot close ups, and we'd be done to move on. I mean, we shot the movie in like 15 days. Unheard of. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a campy movie, it's a zombie apocalypse movie, but it couldn't have been done without Nick and Matt and. JT and Jack and uh, Rocco uh, being prepared for the movie to happen, you know, and they came ready for the movie. And, you know, and in addition to acting in the movie, they were also doing the paperwork and being the executive producers, you know, which is unheard of, you know. And, and I, I hate to say it because he's the strangest guy in the world, but nobody but Ross Patterson could have directed this movie. You know, he, uh, he brought these guys together and he, you know, he made it possible and, and, it, it, it's something, you know, that all veterans love and all veterans get. And, and like, like Nick will say in the documentary tonight, this was made for veterans. And we hope the civilian community can take a look at the, you know, the documentary and take a look at the movie and, and see what we're about, that we're not damaged, that we just have a warped sense of humor. And, you know, Marcus Luttrell said it best. He said, you can't be in the dark world that we're in and not have a dark sense of humor. You know, and so I think this is a great tribute to everybody that made this movie possible, that made Range 15 possible. Not a war story, you know, tells the story of how it came together and what happened. Would you say that Range 15 is going to be the first of many? I think it's already created an environment in the film business that made people, made veterans say, wow, these guys did this movie, so I can do this movie, you know? Because, you know, we all know that Hollywood tells a veteran war story, a military war story from an entirely different perspective. and. Now veterans are getting involved in making their own films and, and, and telling the story for how we see it through our eyes. And so this has definitely made veterans realize that, hey, 
we can go out there and we can do our own film. It may not be a million dollar movie, it might be a $100,000 or a $200,000 movie, but we can go tell about our experiences, you know. And, and If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment below with your favorite branch. Put the Navy.